Welcome back everyone. We're here at Huntington Park for another groundskeeper chat. Today we're joined by Wes and we're going to be talking putting your baseball field to bed. So Wes is the Director of Field Operations here at Huntington Park. Yep. I'll let you say your full name because as I already mentioned, I'm going to totally <laughs> butcher it. And then I'll shoot you with my first question. Yep. So it's Wes Ganopsic and I've got my assistant Connor. Um, so yeah, right now it's just the two of us here this fall. Not the season's done. So when do you guys usually see the seasonal work trickle off? Um, so the way it always had been with minor league baseball was the regular season would end on Labor Day. And so that Monday was it for regular season. We would have some playoffs after that. We typically had always gone to the playoffs. Now Major League Baseball has changed everything. Um, so now the season extends all the way basically through like the third week of September into like the 21st, 22nd, whatever, um, because they built in every Monday is an off day now. And okay. so we still have 144 games, but they had to expand. Mm -hmm. And so it pushed basically three more weeks into September. And then this year, because of COVID, we wound up pushing another two weeks past that to do a full MLB season. So we had alt site every day through April, did a full season and then added another two weeks on. And so we had professional baseball through October 3rd and we had another two weeks of events. And so now we're finally done with on-field stuff so okay. we can start doing our work, putting Perfect. the field bed to bed for the winter. And, you know, unfortunately at this point we lose all our seasonal help. And so it's just Connor and I. And it comes springtime, will you guys be kind of waking everything up with just the two of you? Um, hopefully we'll bring on a third full-time position. Um, we had one before COVID. Obviously, they were cutbacks mm -hmm. and things like that. So if anybody's interested, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully we'll have a, a third full time person. And then uh, we try to get seasonal people in helping us as soon as we can. And so things just started to kind of wrap up here where you guys are going to be looking to hibernation season in a sense. Yeah. And what are you know could you point out to us in any way what are those common wear areas that you guys kind of address before putting the field to bed yeah so in baseball there's kind of the straightforward spots i mean position areas in the outfield tend to get some wear we did pretty well this year for us uh, just with our shade lines and just the way wear always tends to be for us right field position is always bad this year we didn't have to um, do any side in this fall. We just kind of air fight it and we'll throw a little bit of seed down. Um, we'll do some dormant seeding. Around the infield, we get like in front of the mound, we'll always sod a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then like short and second position areas, maybe umpire spots. Uh, we didn't have to do umpire spots this fall. Um, we did do short and second. Now with more of the the way that they do baseball, we do a lot of shifts. And so now there's always two second base position areas okay. and two shortstop position areas. And so it just gives us more work, but Fun. it is what it is. So <laughs> those are kind of spots that we'll throw a little bit of side down. We did that um, ahead of our last homestand. Okay. So that basically we knew with the fall kind of getting pushed back on us mm -hmm. and, and shrinking. We wanted to get that done. We knew we could play through the last homestand. It would be fine. Everything survived good. Um, so that stuff, all that side, you would never even know it's sad at this point, and we can get on to other projects. Awesome. And it looks like um, the mound is covered and home plate is covered. Did you guys repair any of those areas before covering them, or is that a project down the line that you're thinking of attacking? Uh, so any of our clay areas, so the two bullpens, the game mound, and the plate are always covered. Okay. Um, unless they're being used, they're always covered because we want to maintain moisture in the clay. Um, so those four spots always stay covered. Um, we actually finished the season. We had a Saturday night game and then we knew we were going to get rain all through that Sunday, the last day of the, of the season, wound up getting rained out. So we kind of wound up having everything game ready. Mm -hmm. And then for all of our amateur games, which is what we've had the, the last two weeks, okay. um, we cover stuff with AstroTurfs to help okay. us out a little bit, just because we don't have the manpower right now to deal with all those repairs daily and that kind of stuff. So we cover um, both bullpens and the, and the game mound with AstroTurfs for all amateur 
events and games. And so those are basically kind of game ready for mm -hmm. next year. We'll still, in the spring, we'll touch them up. So going into winter, um, we'll try to let them dry out just a little bit. We'll put a uh, layer of plastic down or an old tarp. We'll put plywood on top of that. Okay. We'll put astroturfs on top of that. And then we'll put the tarp back on top of that just to try to insulate it. And it helps prevent heaving. Mm -hmm so much and it helps us just kind of maintain the shape that it's supposed to be especially in the two bullpens because they're in the warning track and they get driven on a lot okay. and that way as you might get a little bit of heaving or freeze thaw um that way we're not putting a bunch of ruts in there the, mm -hmm. the plywood and stuff will protect that and maintain the structural integrity definitely and do you guys utilize any grow covers or tarps on uh, your grass surfaces over the winter? Or do you kind of let those breathe and, and do their natural thing? We do. We do just a little bit. We'll do infield. So we've got one big one for the infield. And then we've got a couple smaller pieces for foul territory. Okay. Um, we will typically leave them off through like Christmas and New Year's partially because we want to let stuff go into dormancy. Mm -hmm. It's just the right thing for the plants. It's better that way going in the winter and getting some dormancy. The other aspect of it is um, if we put them down early, when we go away for a week or two for STMA, mm -hmm. if something happens, like a wind takes them or something happens, there's nobody here to deal with that. Yep. And so we typically will put them on the week after STMA, assuming we don't have snow cover, but we don't typically have snow cover here. So usually the week we get back from STMA, we'll put the blankets down for maybe six weeks to try to just expedite the waking up process. In, you know, in this um, region, we're here in Ohio, in Columbus, Ohio, when does your season start and what does that look like? Is there snow on the ground? Is there, you know, is it already, thick into the rain season. What are you kind of battling right when um, the season starts? Uh, we're kind of battling a lot in March. So, I mean, around here, it seems like the seasons have been pushing back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we typically, somewhere between the end of February and beginning of March, we'll start purposefully trying to wake up the field. We'll start doing things to um, try to get the grass stimulated and, and, and grow. And if we can get a couple warm days in a, a row, we might come through and do a, a mow just to nip the tips and, and try to get stuff going. Um, we might put, we might do a round of top dressing to try to dry in some heat. Um, we may or may not at that point uh, put a coat of a dye, a pigment, a paint, something like that, green on the plants again to try to dry in heat and just warm things up a few degrees and just kind of get things going. So that's kind of the biggest things that we do with that. If we get a, a longer stretch, we'll try to poke holes, maybe do some solid tying in okay. to get that warm air down into the ground, down to the roots and try to stim stimulate more of the plant instead of just up at the surface. Um, so, I mean, those are all things we're trying to do with the grass in, you know, end of February, early March. I mean, typically opening day is right around April 1st. Okay. Kind of the last day of March, first couple of days of April. Um, so that's when we need to be game ready for professional baseball. We don't typically have any events before the pre professional season. Okay. Um, so, I mean, outside of that, we're dealing with trying to get the dirt ready, trying to, again, make sure that the clay is all good to go, try to get the warning track all good to go. We're edging and just, I mean, it, it winds up March, is very busy for us. And again, it's usually, you know, uh, in theory, it'll be two of us. Hopefully it'll at least be three of us. And again, when we can get some seasonal people, we try to at least get them a couple hours a day during that period just to help us out. And what does your fall fertilization program look like? If there is one, you know, this time mm -hmm. of the year, what do you guys do to kind of prep um, for that springtime wake up? Yep, so we don't really do any kind of foliar applications once the season is done, save for um, just before dormancy, we'll do one preventative application of a fungicide just okay. for snow mold. Um, fertility wise, um, the weather's been kind of perfect right now, and so the grass is growing like crazy. 
Um, being a sand based field, we never go too heavy with the granulars because we don't want to leach through, you know, we don't want to pollute the water and we, we don't want to waste the product. Yeah. So we never go too heavy with, um, with our granulars. It's been, we're going to wind up doing a, a four week window here. We'll get some, we'll do another granular app next week. And then we'll do a final one, probably first or second week of December, once we're in dormancy so that product will be out there in the winter. And as soon as, you know, it'll be there for anything the plant is doing throughout the winter and it'll be there ready. So as soon as things saw out in the spring, mm -hmm. it'll be ready to go. And are you guys conducting any soil tests on a yearly basis or on a seasonal basis? What does that um, timeline kind of look like for Huntington Park here? You know, usually we'll just do it once annually just to kind of check up, see where we're at. Um, usually in the fall, we'll try to back up on stuff mm -hmm. and just thin things out a little bit. Um, go a little bit lean. We don't want it too lush or too heavy duty going into the winter because it's just going to promote disease that way. Mm -hmm. So we try to go a little bit, uh, we try to wean back this time of year. And then, like I said, we'll put another FERT app once it goes into dormancy. So it's out there. Perfect. And with the infield, are you guys doing any laser grading or is edging a big priority before putting the field to bed? Um, it is. I mean, we, we try to edge every couple weeks with both the morning track and the infield. Um, so just yesterday, because like I said, our last event in the field was Sunday. Um, we're dealing with some irrigation stuff and, you know, going all over the place. But um, we just swept all the conditioner off the infield yesterday, a first round. So now that we're everything's off the surface hopefully we'll get one more or two more good heavy rains try to work anything else that's kind of smashed in there from rolling and traffic we'll come back up to the surface we'll sweep it again one more time because we don't want any conditioner out there going into okay. winter um, and then from there either this fall or first thing in the spring we'll try to add a full truckload of infill material okay. um, we just we haven't done it in two years and just with constant maintenance constant play i mean basically the field gets used here every day from april through mid-october and so every time you know cleats and shoes and tires and equipment and you know you get a couple bad weather days and over the course of seven months you know material goes away and you wouldn't think it'd be tons and tons but it does wind up being that yep. so either late this fall or first thing in the spring we'll try to bring out you know somewhere between 20 and 25 tons of infield okay. we'll get it evenly spread on there we'll till it down to maybe a two to three inch depth to incorporate the new with the old um, our infield is kind of custom okay. so we know we're getting exactly when they send us something it matches exactly to the old stuff mm -hmm. but you still want to till it get all that stuff incorporated and then come through and laser grade and make sure everything's good to go. Perfect. And then as far as like the facility goes, there's, you know, it looks like a lot of just cleaning up going on here today, but does that fall on your guys' shoulders at all is getting the facility ready to be put to bed or you guys have the luxury of only focusing on the field? Um, so in the fall, especially, we tend to be pretty much just within the walls of okay. the field. Um, we're also um, responsible for like the hill and all the outside landscape, kind mm -hmm. of the trees and shrubs and that sort of stuff. Um, so when we have some time, we try to get out there and deal with that stuff as well. We just airified the hill last week. We'll get a little bit of seed down there too. And just, you know, so we need to maintain those things as well. Mm -hmm. um, everything else in the ballpark, there's other, there's another department that maintains all of that kind of stuff. And then we've got a bunch of contractors in, we've got a lot of painting getting done and just, I mean, ballpark's 13 years old now and you just need to keep things updated to make sure it stays fresh and, um, doesn't go bad real quick. And as you mentioned air um, airification over on the hill, when do you guys, when will you do that as kind of, um, like when's the last time you'll do that before putting the field to bed? So we solid tined last week. We okay. did half inch solid tining at two inch spacing. And then the tines, we went full depth. The, the tines are 
five and three quarters inches. So just under six inches deep. And then we top dressed about 30 tons of sand out here. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that last week. Um, again, we did solid tining because all the other stuff is going on. We wind up with hoses and other stuff on the warning track. It was gonna be too problematic to pull cores and have to be sweeping and driving on the warning track. And so instead of fighting that battle, we'd solid tined last week, let it go a couple weeks once everything else is done to where we're not gonna be competing for the warning track space. Yep. We'll pull cores again, probably, you know, week before Thanksgiving or whatever, try to get aggressive with that, sweep all the cores, and then it'll sit kind of open going into the winter and Perfect. really try to promote root depth and, you know, lateral growth and, and really try to knit back together. Perfect. And as far as equipment goes, you know, you guys are operating year round. So is there ever a point that you guys address your equipment before putting the field to bed or is that something you you know take up time in the winter to do yeah i mean we try to stay on top of the equipment throughout the year and as things come up you know we'll deal with it we try to do normal basic maintenance mm -hmm. but um, that's one of the big projects once we get like snow cover or just like once we're done on the field um, that's one of our big off-season projects is we'll just go through all the equipment and mm -hmm. change all the fluids and do everything that we need to, all the major overall overhaul stuff with the equipment and deal with mm -hmm. that. That's also when we're doing the hiring and planning for the next year and getting product in and all that kind of stuff. So I, there's definitely a little repair going on over in the corner there. Yeah. But when do you really like address any major repairs you know in a perfect world when would you want that to kind of pop up on your calendar i mean now yeah. honestly i mean as soon as we're done with activity in the fall because that's when we're going to have the opportunity to do things mm -hmm. like we're way down on manpower because it's just connor and i right now and so that makes things more challenging and maybe for some things like laser grading and stuff we might have to bring in a contractor to help us out and mm -hmm. you know bring in some bigger equipment but um, this is the time of year that we're trying to do any kind of renovations like if we had to rebuild the mounds or uh, move some edges or if we're going to do some major siding anything like that right now is when we're going to do it um, going into the winter because mm -hmm. the spring it's so up in the air you never know i mean you could be frozen until opening day yep. and so you can i mean the old saying don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today um we just we don't know we never know what march and february are going to look like yeah. so we always want to get things done in october and november and into december if we need to definitely i mean you answered all my questions is there anything else that i didn't touch on that you would want to really hit home um I don't know. Like I said, the, the biggest thing is just tr everything that you can do to to get things ready in the fall and just be ready so that when you've got opening day or the first time you need to get on the field, you're not trying to fight battles mm -hmm. and, and do projects in the spring because you don't know availability of people and products. And especially, I mean, now there's supply chain issues yeah. that, you know, you might not get stuff for months when you need to. So if yeah. you can get your hands on things now, it's good to do that. If you have people now, it's good to do that. And um, it looks like at least for the next couple of weeks, you know, it might be a little bit cooler than this, but if we've got this kind of weather, yeah. you can't ask for better. Definitely. Yeah, that's why we're looking to put this kind of educational information out there in the fall because people really need to start thinking about spring with all the shortages and yeah supply chains just to make sure that you have the material you need come springtime. Yep. So well thank you so much for doing this and Absolutely. we appreciate your time. Absolutely. Absolutely.